Nate Harvey, EliteFTS.com, Equipment Sales and Coach. Today we're gonna to go through some sled drag variations I've been doing with myself and some of my athletes. Instead of just the, the basic throw my belt on and throw as much weight on there as I can. The first one we're gonna go through is gonna be Frankenstein drags, okay? You're gonna need two carabiners, uh, a little bit of weight, you don't need much for this. This is gonna tear your uh, hip flexors up pretty good. So I got a 25 on there. So I need two straps, okay? Two carabiners. And my second strap is gonna be in there like a Y, okay? So I have the loops at each end, okay? That's your setup for Frankenstein drag. Second, we're gonna do just a front rise drag for my upper body. Again, these are great warm-ups or finishers. And then the third one's gonna be more of our traditional drag with just a belt, but I'm gonna be on my tiptoes. So for the first one to get set up for Frankenstein drag, and then we wanna make sure our straps, the holes are big enough so I can fit my feet through them. Step in here, try not to fall over. Heel. And I'm in. Try to keep these down low. Uh, if you're worried about your pretty shins getting scraped up, maybe put some tall socks on. I'm going to step out, kind of get tension, and kind of like we did on the belt squatter, I'm going to post my one foot, pull with the other, post, pull, post, pull, so it's not a race. Try to keep your legs straight for the most part. And then once you get a rhythm, you can pick it up a little more. But the big thing here is we'll go about 30, 60 yards. And by the time you're at the end of that, you're going to have a ton of blood up through your hip flexors. It's really good for desk jockeys or, like I said, just warming up for a squat or even at the end of your workout. Next is a front raise drag. I'm going to step out, get a little bit of tension. Again, we don't need a ton of weight. I got a 25 on there. This could be used for or finisher at the end, whatever is up to you. I typically use this for a warm up with our guys. So all I'm gonna do is brace myself and you'll see I'm starting in a stretch position. So I get a little bit of stretch with the movement, pull, front raise, step out, get tension. Okay. So I'm stretched, pull through, walk it out, stretch, pull through, walk it out. Again, not a race, I'm not trying to go super fast. Um, the good thing about these is there's no eccentric stress. So there's no lowering, it's all concentric, it's all blood movement. Just push a, bu push a bunch of blood through my shoulders. All right, and then the last one. So again, just your traditional belt and sled uh, set up for this one. I'm gonna strap in, turn my belt around. The difference with this is you can see I only have a 25 on there. Typically, if I'm doing this uh, in a workout, I may have a plate or two, um, but you don't need to go super heavy on these. Start out a little lighter and kind of feel your way through them. All I'm gonna do is walk on my tiptoes. We talked about this variation on the reverse hyper earlier where it's kind of lighten up that inner hamstring a little bit. And I found these the same on this, just walk on your tiptoes and it gets it in that medial hamstring a little more. So again, good for lifters, athletes, anybody who needs hamstrings. So I think that has everybody covered. So I'm just up on my toes, I just walk. Okay, nothing special, just walk. Again, if I'm a lifter, good warm up, hit the hamstrings. If I'm an athlete, I can get some transference there, putting force into the ground so I'm up on my toes and training a little bit of calves at the same time.